I'll open this up for a second to kill. So we'll kill solar collection if you want. I'll take your camera and I'll hold it way high. You guys can see up on the roof. So up top on the roof is uh, 2,500 watts of solar. So we're collecting that during the day. Um, sorry if I'm moving the camera around, no crazy. There you go. Um, and uh, we can climb up through these hatches here. Oops, that open. So I can fold this bed down and sort of use it as a ladder and climb right up onto the roof from there. For the kitchen, I just climb, scramble onto the kitchen counter and get up on the roof. And so sometimes I have to, I have to squeegee the panels off when they get dusty and gross up there and clean them off. They stay cleaner out here though, don't they? Uh, they still could collect dust. Yeah. We hadn't cleaned ours in like a couple months. I think yesterday when we had all that good sun. Um, it went from about 80 watts to almost 200 watts was the difference in how dirty they were. So there was, of course, the time difference of me cleaning it and the sun came up a little higher, but it definitely made a difference. All right, and this is your bedroom area back here. Yep. Where the, the kids are hiding. They don't want to be on camera, right. I think. Uh, so it doesn't matter. So I like our, being on camera. So our bed folds down. Um, it's like a little kickstand for it. It pops into a slot on the floor. There's a little support hole. And I have a little actuator ram that helps us assist with carrying it down because it's pretty heavy. Um, and so we just tuck our bed and sheets behind there and then it folds out. This is pretty much the living room. If well, you were to find the living room with us, this is what you call the living room. Even though we use that area as the living room. Um, yeah. And then Thank this, you. this is our closet area so everybody gets a drawer. I'm not really happy with how these turned out, but at least they keep from sliding out all the way. We just won't show it that close. Yeah, you? there you go. It's fine. Um, and you said, can I pick your brain about the internet, or yeah, do you sure. want to wait until after? Well, maybe we'll get, do that when we're done, because there's there's okay. some involvement on in that one. And you all can right. totally record it if you want, or whatever. All right. Um, this is our washer and dryer. So we did a load this morning, and this is something that just got <laughs> finished, so... And you, you said the dryer is special dryer, right? Uh, the dryer is a uh, <laughs> condensing evaporative dryer. <coughs> what that means is that it's like a dehumidifier with a tumbling drum, effectively. So, uh, or an air conditioner, kind of, as well. So an air conditioner, if you consider that cold air blows out, the moist water condenses off of it and drips out, and the mm -hmm. hot air blows outside, usually. Mm -hmm. What this does is the air conditioning compressor output... Um, recirculates the hot air back into the drum, the cold air continues to cool it off, and then the moisture drains out, and that's it's, it's extracting the moisture out of the clothes. So what there is, is there's a um, heat pump grill inside of here, and these little fins, sometimes you have to sort of bend, bend them back, it's a little bit fragile, sometimes the kids aren't careful. Um, all of the air blows through this, and then it drains the water out through this, because it condenses against that grill there, so that's your heat pump. Oh. Um, it's been really good dryer so far. It wasn't really that expensive, but it's also a 230 volt dryer and a 230 volt washing machine. And you run this all off your solar and your right. batteries. Yeah. So this cool. is all power dri driven off. It's kind of fun knowing that your dryer and washer are all running off of the sun. That is. During yeah. the summertime, when we have full power for a long period of time, we would run out of water before we run out of power running with laundry. So, that's impressive. So it's kind of nice. We have a hundred gallons worth of water. Nice. So. All right. Well, let's yeah. We'll go head up. back up, and we'll head go outside. outside real quick and sure. do the quick walk around out there. And yeah. Oh, something that didn't occur to me is when you when I put that camera up top, you'll have seen the. Uh, you fun, baby. Yes. In a minute. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> you'll have seen the antennas that are up there too. All of the solar that's collected from up on the roof up there is uh, collected and stored in the battery here. So this is a, um, a battery based on a Nissan Leaf cells. So, so these are the same cells that are in a Generation 2 Nissan Leaf car. Uh -huh. um, this is the full battery plus one extra little cell section uh, from the traction battery. Uh, it's reconfigured from a 400 volt battery system to a 48 volt I battery. Might. So that can monitor 16 cells. There's actually 192 cells inside of this pack. 
but because of the, orient the way the physical arrangement of the cells are here, I'll peel back the center one. So you can see right there, that's one of the center taps. Uh -huh. And so these batteries, the way they're... Um, are those are your bounce loads so uh, monitors? Or those are, yeah, those are the balance leads. Okay. So I, I monitor, so you can see on the screen, it's kind of bright out here, but you can see right there, that's the voltage of every single one of the, of the cell groups. Okay. So you can see the voltage there, down to 100 thousandths of a volt, and then there's also resistance. Uh -huh. um, so right now the resistance is fairly nominal. Cell 8 is always a little funny for its resistance, because it's the one that's connected to the cross of the bus bar, oh, okay. from one so. section to the other. So you basically, it, it picks up on that. Yeah, it, it sees that resistance difference. It's fine. It doesn't really harm anything, but it it does. You just got to remember that it's there. And so the way the batteries are actually configured is they have, um, there's a little bit of rust on these, which is interesting. So there's, I probably need to keep the moisture load down a little more somehow. Um, each of these boxes has four foil pouches inside of them, so that foil pouch has only a positive and negative lead inside of it. Okay, so these are not, uh, these aren't like 18650. No, these not. are the uh, other ones that have, not that has a possibility, but you have to have safeties on them to the, the package, right? Right, right, right. So, and you got the redundancies built in. Right, so, so each of the batteries has three terminals. There's the positive and the negative, and then a center tab. So the, if, if you measure the voltage across both of these pieces, it's 8.4 volts. If you measure from here to here, it's 4.2, and from here to here, it's 4.2. Or okay. if you reverse your leads, it's like negative, you know, because it's a center tap battery. So these batteries pouches are configured on a two by two, 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 seri two serial, two parallel. Okay. And so what you end up with is um, the ability to reach into the batteries and touch two groups, two of the cells at a time inside of there, through the center tap, because they're physically paired together inside of it. So of the 192 cells, I can get to some of them. Because I only have 16 channels to monitor on, I then pair the cells up by seven. So every seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's a section. So I measure a section. So basically there's a piece that goes to here, and then a bus bar, and then this next connection, it's really, this is a bus bar, it's about this wide, and then it's another bus bar that goes down, so it kind of does this thing. Okay, and then serial parallel. Okay. So it's serial parallel, serial parallel, basically, is how it is arranged. So, so let me let me ask you this, you got your battery system completely isolated from your bus, or do you have a ground? Uh, there is bus? no actual earth, there's only a reference earth, these are floating from the chassis. Okay. Not reference. There's these are not bolted to the chassis at all. Okay, so you did that for safety concerns right. because of the uh, high voltage of the DC line. Uh, yeah, that and there isn't really a necessary reason to tie that. So what there is is the the, the power handling equipment, the inverters, and the other pieces. They are uh, grounded to the chassis. If for some reason this were to touch the, you know, it would have braided through and the 48 volt DC were to touch the chassis, um, what would happen is there would be an immediate, it, would, it wouldn't pop the big 350 amp fuse. What it would do instead is it would um, cause a fault at one of the smaller pieces of equipment and the equipment would either disconnect just in a safe manner or it would break the fuse on the smaller fuse because it's the effort would just try to do that smaller second. What I was trying to do by isolating these is to avoid a huge dis current discharge potential. I still have breakers at, yeah. the, at the current source, and on the other side that are current supply from the solar and from the charging, the inverter charger, there's uh, one-time fuses over on that other side. So the whole wire length from both directions is protected. But um, the intent is the type of faults that I would expect to normally happen aren't huge catastrophic faults. So the cabling breaking is more like an equipment failure or a thing falling off or something like that. And next video will be broccoli bus number four. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and hit the little bell notification if you want to be notified anytime a video comes out.